With the Advantech subfloor assembly, you can be sure that you're building a reputation on something stronger. And the best builders, well, they may always stand apart, but they never stand alone. So ask yourself, are you bringing your A-game? Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Steve Azek, Architect here. I'm back at the studio, and uh, today's video, we're going to talk about the foundation plan. And uh, there's a whole lot of aspects, a lot of information that we have to transfer across that plan to the general contractor and to the uh, concrete uh, foundation contractor. So, you know, we're going to go over all the dimensions. We're going to go over how I do it, the things that I'm concerned about, how we lay it out, all of that good stuff. So let's, uh, without further ado, let's grab Big Red and let's uh, dive into it. All right. So here we have the foundation plan. Big Red is going to join us. First thing we should start out with is a little bit of orientation. So here is the outline of the basement we talked about. So about 40% of this house has a basement under it. And that's a 26 foot by 26 foot basement there. It is a full height concrete foundation wall. Um, you can see here we have that designated. That is a 10 inch concrete foundation wall and here we have dimension that is a two foot by 10 inch concrete footing. <clears throat> so we know the dimensions of the foundation wall. We know the parameters by which we're going to cast that foundation wall. We can see down here we have a little legend and understand that you know when you look at this you can see how things are group nicely. The dimensions of footing and foundation wall, the parameters of what's happening at the basement slab, and then the legend of the lines here. So those are foundation wall, these are footing lines, and then this is to the perimeter drain. And then you can see here that the basement, um, at its base we have a four inch concrete slab, a six mil poly vapor retarder, two inches of rigid insulation, four inches of stone, and then it's completed with either compacted or undisturbed earth below there. On the inside of the foundation wall, notice that we have a two foot eight inch by two foot eight inch concrete footing here. This is gonna pick up an intermediate column that picks up a girder, which will then pick up the floor framing. And that's called out here. You can see it's a 10 inch concrete footing with five number fives each way. So the five number fives are reinforcing bars. And then on top of that sits, it's called out over here, three and a half inch diameter lolly column. And that's typical unless noted otherwise. In this case, we only have one um, lolly column. Around the building, remember we had a series of board form concrete piers. So you can see those there, 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 there. There, two, these two here were specialty piers, so they had that high side that catches the floor frame and then the low side that catches the deck. And then here we have the concrete pier that actually rises up above the deck and catches those two columns. We saw that in the elevation. And then here we have a tube footing and then a slab here, and that's to catch that um, sloping ramp. This catches that front um, entryway deck. This is catching the bump out to the dining room and then of course we have the living space proper there and then we have the living space proper here for the owner suite that had that nice view out the side here. Um, notice that there are all the dimensions needed to properly place the uh, concrete walls laterally um, and uh, respective of each other that we have all of the dimensions. We also have all the dimensions you can see here, 12 foot, 7 foot, 6 or 14 foot, sorry, um, to that concrete pier. But 
what we, in, in an effort to help the foundation guy, we want to make sure that that pier is parallel to this wall and parallel to that wall. So basically it needs to ensure that, you know, it's at a right angle when it's placed out there. And we have this dimension and we have that dimension. What we don't have was the hypotenuse dimension. So I give that to these guys. I click there, I click there, and I extract the dimension. And you can see here it's 15, 10, and 9 sixteenths. So it's going to fall on some wacky grid like eighth inch or sixteenth inch just because it's not, it's the hypotenuse of that right triangle. But that gives him the exact location of that corner, displaced from this wall, displaced from that wall, but also displaced from that corner as a right triangle, giving him the same dimension on this side now allows him to perfectly place that pier in respect to this foundation wall and that foundation wall to ensure that we're getting the proper parallel nature of positioning of that pier. Now, we talked about a lot of the placing of this dimensionally and horizontally. What we didn't really talk about is how do we know what is happening vertically with this foundation wall? Well, that's what these numbers are all about. You can see here, we call out top of wall at 0.0. .0. Now, a lot of times if we have a very exacting survey that has contours out here and they have their numbers of 736 or whatever, you know, 5736. Then we'll have a number here that would be 5736.00, um, you know, or 8 inches above that, that would set this. But we didn't have the contours there, so what Jake and I chose to do was we just set the top of the wall at 00. zero. And that's pretty common for me. Um we go out to a job site, we figure out where the high ground is, we set that foundation wall where we want to set it, and then I make everything relative to that number. So you can see the top of footing is actually minus 7.83 or minus 7 foot 10 inches. Um, you can also see here the top of the footing is the same dimension as that. So that means that the top of footing here and the top of that footing are the same. Right, so that now the concrete guy knows the elevations and he knows that the bottom of that footing is 10 inches down. Um, we know that the top of slab is at 7.33, which is 0.5 feet or 6 inches. Now, where do we get that 6 inches? That's that 4 inch concrete slab and the 2 inches of rigid insulation that then get placed on top of the footing that brings us up that 6 inches. The concrete piers, you can see those were all set also to 0, 0.00, so that means all of these piers that are carrying the floor frame match the elevation of the foundation wall there. So that when all of the board form concrete piers were cast and the foundation wall here, that everything was equal in elevation. Now, the one outlier was this one. You can see that one's at plus 4.58, which is, you know, about four foot, I don't know, five, five, eight. That's probably about four foot, seven inches, plus four foot, seven inches. That's that pier that rises up above the height of the foundation wall and the deck because that one actually acts as part of the rail system on the house and it's going to pick that up. So we just needed to calculate where the deck was and how high we wanted to come above that deck, that 40 inches plus, and uh, we can set that dimension. But nonetheless, this is very imperative information that the concrete and general contractor need to know. They don't, you know, just giving them the plan dimensions isn't enough. They need to know how high things are coming because in some foundations where they get complicated you might have a step in the wall where it steps down or in some cases I've had foundation plans that might have 20 or 30 steps in footings and foundation walls if the house is big enough and it's a steeply um, sloping site so the uh, last piece to talk about on the foundation wall is you can see here we have that perforated drain running around the inside. But remember, water is down and out. So we need to get it out. So how do we get it out? Well, we run that drain pipe out 
in this direction and you can see there I have a call out that says drain to daylight and you can see it here we have a secondary pipe and it says drain to daylight there now why do we have two pipes well we have pipe one, pipe two. If pipe one clogs, then pipe two still has the ability to uh, take care of the removal or the down and out process of getting rid of that water for us. So anyways, that's kind of the development of the foundation plan and getting it prepared for construction. So if you have any questions, certainly, uh, Leave them in the comment section. Check out the uh, slideshow to follow. Always a treat. Until next time.